Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Previously, I made a short video about Raspberry Pi OS Trixie. It's based on Debian 13 that just released this summer. And I talked about a few of the features, but in this video, we're going to go in depth. We're going to click into every single one of these things and more. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. You know, but first, while I was doing this short video, I learned that that you can actually boot directly into Raspberry Pi Imager on Raspberry Pi 5, 500, 500 plus. So that makes it remarkably easy. You don't have to pull the SD card out or anything like that. Just boot right into Imager off of the internet. You need an Ethernet connection to hold down the shift key. Check out that video to see it in action. Now, I have to make a correction. I was talking about these USB switches in line a USB-C to USB-C, they don't work with the Raspberry Pi 5 power supply. You have to get the Canakit USB-C PD Pi switch for Raspberry Pi. Uh, so, yeah, and that price, it looks a lot at $19.99, but if you go directly to Canakit, their shipping puts it over $27. So if you have Amazon Prime, you might look at the $19 one. Oh, and there's a $24 uh, USB-C power supply with the switch. That's pretty cool from Canakit as well. So I'll look for the link down below. That always, that helps me out too. So the other thing in my previous video where I flashed from the, from booting into Imager is I, I used just the recommended environment. I didn't get the recommended applications as well. So if you go back into other, yeah, other operating systems, yeah, I got everything. Okay, so first thing, they fixed the 2038 32-bit time bug. Yeah, storing the date in a 32-bit variable and starting from January 1st, 1970, you're going to run out of time in 2038 sometime. So they went to 64-bit and it's going to last 2 million years. They've updated the desktop theme, new icons, fonts, and backgrounds. Very, very nice. Okay. The biggest thing was Control Center. It brings all of the various different preferences together into a single interface. This one's interesting. Defaults, it uh, adjusts your screen rapidly there. So a large screen gets big fonts. Medium screen gets medium fonts. And you see the icons shrink and the taskbar shrink. And a small screen, everything got really small. I guess it's to make more room. So I like the medium default. Desktop, there's different options for the background images. Stretch, tile, fill, etc. You can upload different uh, backgrounds if you like. Choosing colors for, yeah. Okay, desktop folder. I'm going to show documents on the desktop. Okay, display. Yeah, this would enable on screen keyboard essentially. And there's screen blanking, but there's no time timeout setting. So it, it's going to blank the screen after a while, but you can't adjust for the time, at least not here. Interfaces, yeah, this is where you can switch on various things like SSH, VNC, etc. Keyboard. Okay, you can set the layout here and set the timing. Okay, so for locale, English, United States, character set, time zone, America Phoenix for me keyboard. Again here, that was also under the keyboard aspect as well. And setting the Wi-Fi country. Okay, that was localization. Next is mouse, acceleration, delay, and you could switch it to left-handed mouse if you need. Performance? Uh, leave a comment down below if you know what these mean. I don't. <laughs> I haven't been around Raspberry Pi that much this last year with Meshtastic on the top of the charts. Okay, so... Yeah, disable USB current limit. I'm not going to switch that off. I was so jazzed that my printers just just in the just in the time it took to load and install the Raspberry Pi OS, it has my printer all ready to go. I didn't have to do anything. This lets you identify and manage multiple monitors here, resolution, frequency, orientation, if you had more than one screen, etc. Okay system, change password, host name. Now, this next thing is interesting, this boot. So you can boot to the desktop 
or you can boot to the CLI. So you can have you can have your desktop and you can have your light version too. And if I read correctly, it says they update independently of each other. Console auto login, desktop auto login, splash screen, and I prefer Firefox. Taskbar, actually like my taskbar on the bottom, uh, when you click on the screen defaults, it flies back up to the top. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and you can set colors, etc. I'm going to leave everything just the way it is. Okay, and theme. Yeah, this is the new font. This Nunito Sans light, regular, medium, semi-bold, bold. But the Nunito Sans really brings it a much more up-to-date look. This is interesting. Highlight color, highlight text color. We're going to see an example of what these highlights mean. Okay, mouse cursor, small, medium, and large. You could go with a dark theme. I'm a light theme guy. Don't ask me why. Okay, that's it for Control Center. Okay, Bookshelf is a cool feature. It's probably been around. I probably never paid any attention to it, but you can have access to all the back issues of the Raspberry Pi magazine. You can see the one that's locked. If you want to unlock any locked items, you want to become a subscriber. So you contribute. And I didn't realize there's this many books available on the bookshelf either. Boy, there's so much to do. Now watch as we highlight a book. Yeah, as we highlight the book, you actually get a preview of what's in the book. Uh, it can kind of be annoying while you're trying to scroll, but it's very handy. So I try to scroll in an open area, not over the icons themselves. And then, yeah, but like, it's really cool. You get a preview of what's in the book. Raspberry Pi Connect is already installed. Yeah, you can see a little icon here. To turn it on, you have to sign in. I don't have my passwords on this Raspberry Pi right now, so. Yeah, because when you click on Turn On Raspberry Pi Connect, you have to actually sign in to Raspberry Pi, because that's where you're going to access Raspberry Pi Connect as well. The agent connects via HTML to the Raspberry Pi page, and then you operate the desktop through the web page. Yeah, I made a complete video on that. Look for the link down below. Yeah, when it first came out, I made that video, and it's for Raspberry Pi 5 and 4. Yeah, so check out my Raspberry Pi playlist as well. Let's see. Flash desktop with recommended software. We're going to go through the start menu and look at stuff. Yeah, so we got Office, got a lot more programming options, sound and video, graphics, games, some CAD. That's interesting. Yeah. Let's see. You know, I never noticed this before. Down here, Task Manager. Leave a comment down below if that was included before, because I just never noticed it until just now when I'm going through the Start menu. And it looks very much like the Windows Task Manager. You can see CPU, GPU, memory usage, and you can see individual items and how much resources they're taking up. Let's see, Preferences, Add, re Recommend. Oh, this is Recommended Software. So... This shows the software mostly that was installed when I chose recommended software. So there's an all programs and you can scroll through and see which ones are checked and which ones aren't checked. So I got most everything that's recommended when I just said, yeah, give me recommended. And again, yeah, you can see when you hover over an item, you get like a preview. Scratch 3? Oh my, there's Scratch 3 on here. Cool. I'm going to play with that. that. That sounds fun. Yeah, I might make a video about Scratch 3. <laughs> yeah, leave a comment down below if you see something that you like that you'd like to go in, in depth on. Visual Studio Code, well, I, I didn't realize. You, you would, you, I would have to think that, yeah, it's available for Linux, but yeah, I hadn't really thought of it. Raspberry Pi 4K wallpaper. Yeah, I, I don't have any 4K monitors. Oh, I need a 4K monitor. I need a 4K TV, too. That's terrible. Yeah. My old 56-inch television uh, with the Roku on it is it's getting old. It's going to be time to go, go to Costco and <laughs> get a 4K TV. Yeah. Okay. So, check out my previous videos. The short. Check out Booting Into Imager. Look for the product page down below for the USB-C switch. And leave a comment down below. Give a, this video a like. And before you go watch more of my Raspberry Pi videos, please click.
click on subscribe. Thank you very much.